Hi, I'm Alex Owens. I'm here with Andrew Kircher showing off a light bulb from Menlo Park. So Andrew, what is this? What light bulb is it? Yeah, so you've correctly identified it's a light bulb. It's one of those very common objects that I think everybody would recognize, but this is a pretty significant light bulb. This is a pretty cool one. So this is one from our collection. A lot of people realize that Port Huron has a pretty amazing connection with Thomas Edison. So Thomas Edison grew up here in Port Huron. His family lived here. And of course, he's probably the world's most famous inventor and most famous for perfecting the incandescent light bulb. And uh, this is one that is one of the earliest light bulbs that probably still exists. This is one of the first couple of hundred to come out of his lab at Lenenlo Park, New Jersey, which I think, interestingly enough, Menlo Park, the building where this light bulb was made, was built by Sam Edison, uh, Thomas's father, who lived here in Port Huron. So it's from Menlo Park. Can you tell me more about like how it, how bright it is, how it was used? Yeah. So it is a very early bulb. So it's a little bit less bright than you know, the stage lighting we have today. Of course, we're using you know LEDs and even modern incandescent bulbs could have quite a bit higher of a wattage. But the thing that's really interesting about this one, there's a couple ways you can tell it's a really early bulb too. Um, it, the fact that it has this kind of wooden base and there's actually a couple of holes on the side where you would actually plug that in. The idea of screwing in a light bulb, that was a Thomas Edison invention. He worked on that completely by himself came up with that system, that hadn't even been developed yet. This was a hand form bulb, so you can even see on the top, this was made by a glass blower, and it had to be pinched off at the top to create a vacuum inside the bulb. One of the other ways we know it's really an early bulb and wouldn't give off a ton of light, is you can see the filament inside. So the filament is that wire or that material that heats up, it incandesces with electricity, that's why it's called incandescent light. When you run electricity through, it gets hot, it gets bright. They were using a carbonized bamboo filament, and you can actually see there's two little pieces of it left in kind of what looks like clamps or jaws there. This was a pretty good method. It worked pretty well. They would continue to improve that with experimentation. Uh, but being such an early bulb, one of the other reason, reasons we know it is, is there's actually a little red H on the outside. And that, that actually had nothing to do with the manufacture of the bulb. That was a signifier that this went into the collection of William Hammer. So William Hammer was one of the technicians who was helping Edison. He was an early electrical pioneer. He would have been working on this bulb. This bulb would have been handled by Thomas Edison. And William Hammer would go on to uh, create a number of inventions on his own. He actually was the first person to ever put electric light bulbs and have an electrically lit advertising sign. So if you've ever seen a sign lit up at night, we have William Hammer to thank for it. So. It's obviously a handmade light bulb. What are some of the downsides? Yeah, so one of these would have been more expensive. Um, Edison's goal, people knew about the idea of incandescing metal to create light for a long time. Um, and there were even early attempts at light bulbs. He didn't create any of this in a vacuum, although ironically it was that vacuum was one of the steps that he would add to make the light bulb successful. So he kind of, as we all do, stand on the shoulders of pioneers, people would come before him, combined all of these different elements. These early handmade bulbs wouldn't have been the most practical for uh, mass marketing. You wouldn't have gone to the store and bought something like this. The early places that were electrified were all done on a one-off basis. In fact, if you think about all the things that go into, if you wanted to screw in a light bulb in your home, you need to have wires, you need to have switches, you need to have a power generating plant that's gonna bring electricity into your home. None of that existed in the early 1880s. That entire infrastructure had to be created. Uh, so this would have been very early. I would still classify this as basically an experimental light bulb on their way to perfecting that in the 1880s. So on average, how long would this light bulb last? Uh, some could last um, for thousands of hours. There are some of those early light bulbs that use very, very low wattage. There's amazingly one that I believe it's out in San Francisco that's been hanging in a fire station that is still on. I mean, it's been on for decades and decades and decades, and I think they crossed the century mark. So if you have those really low wattage bulbs and you kind of get lucky enough, you don't pump a ton of electricity through and you don't turn it on and off a lot because that's kind of a jolt to the system, sometimes they can last for over 100 years. 
So where can we find this at the museum? So this particular bulb is here at our Carnegie Museum. It's actually in our visible storage. It's something we rotate into and out of displays. The other place I would recommend people check out is our Thomas Edison Depot Museum. That's going to be opening uh, in April. It'll be open from April to basically through December. On weekends, the middle of the summer, it's open seven days a week. And it's an entire museum dedicated to Thomas Edison, his time in Port Huron, and his life as an inventor. So there are a lot of light bulbs to see there. Thank you, Andrew, for showcasing this item. To find more items like this one, go to the Port Huron Museum. For Thumb Coast TV, I'm Alex Owens.